All right, First Thessalonians chapter 5. We're going to read, I'll read the whole chapter today, and then we'll get started. Uh, the Bible reads, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But, bre but ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. And we are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. Amen. For God hath not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, and warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. Seeing that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow which is that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, Amen. for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesyings, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that called you, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord er, that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The name of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to preach your word, Lord. I pray that you would just fill me with your spirit and fill me with the boldness to preach. Uh, preach the things that you would have me to say, and I pray that you would open the ears of all the saints today so that we may all be edified. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, the title of my sermon is Prove All Things, pulled from verse 21 there. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. You see, um, I want to give you a few things today that will hopefully help you in your um, in your Bible study and in other areas of life, whether it's listening to preaching or, or what have you. I want to give you three points um, that will help you. But first, before I get into that, who remembers the story where uh, Jesus fed the 5,000? We all know that story, right? Jesus, uh, it's in John chapter 6. But remember, before they found the kid with the five loaves of bread, what did they say? Philip said, or Jesus said unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him that uh, for he himself knew what he would do. So he wanted to kind of test Philip a little bit. He wanted to test what he was thinking and, of course, Philip went on to say, you know, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for all these, you know, that everyone may take a little. So he was still minding earthly things. He didn't really um, process it that Jesus was about to perform a miracle at that time, right? So uh, let's turn to the book of 1 John, chapter 2. 1 John, chapter 2. And while you turn there, I want to read to you from Romans uh, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. This is a rather famous passage. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, when we study our Bible, when we get into the Bible and, and we get into the doctrine, we start applying it to our life, uh, our lives, it, it starts to uh, transform us. It starts to renew our minds, and it starts to uh, prove to us what we ought to be doing with our lives. It proves to us that we ought to be winning people to Christ. It proves to us that we ought to be, um, you know, going soul winning and studying and to show ourselves to prove, right? Um, the first point that I want to give you here today is that we need to prove Bible teachers or preachers, whether they're preaching the truth. We need to prove all things. That includes all things that we hear, whether it's preaching, you know, online or in church or whatever it may be. And let's read in verse 
uh, verse 18. We'll start reading verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 18. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. So what's he talking about? There's talk, he's talking about people that are denying Christ. Antichrist means in the place of Christ. <clears throat> so let's keep reading. Verse 19, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lies of the truth. Now watch this. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. No. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. So you see, if anyone, um, if anyone starts to teach that there's any salvation outside of Jesus Christ, or outside of believing on the name of Jesus Christ, that person's a liar and a heretic. That person's a false teacher. Um, if someone tries to tell me, you know, if someone tries to tell me Billy Graham is a good teacher, I say prove it. Let's prove all things. Let's prove what he said. Uh, Billy Graham taught that there is salvation outside of Jesus Christ. There's salvation for people who are Muslims or Hindus. They don't even know the name of Jesus Christ. And he taught that they're all, you know, our brothers and sisters. Let's hold hands and sing Kumbaya, right? Well, let's prove what the Bible says. Let's go to uh, John chapter 14. While you turn there, let's read, let's read from... Uh, let me read to you from John chapter 1, actually. John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. See, that's the only way to get born of God is to believe on the name of Jesus Christ. That's what we preach when we're out soul winning. We preach that you have to put all of your faith in Christ, and it's not by repenting of your sins. It's not by turning a note over a new leaf in your life. It's about believing on the name of Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection. In John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And so he says, there's, there's no other way. There's, there's no way you can trust in any other God to be saved. There's no way you can trust in yourself or your own conscience to be saved. Like many false teachers out there today, they're still in the world. <clears throat> still in the world today. And they're only going to increase um, up until the, the time of the end when the Antichrist comes to power. So we have to prove, whenever we hear, just because somebody is a big name, just because somebody is you know, a big shot, or they speak you know, swelling words, of man's wisdom. We don't want to go with man's wisdom. We want to go with the words that the Holy Ghost teaches. We want to go with the words that the Bible teaches. We want to be like those in Thessalonica in Acts, 6, in Acts uh, chapter 17, verse 11. These, uh, in Berea, rather, they were more noble than they in Thessalonica in that they received the Word of God with all readiness of mind and searched the Scriptures daily whether those things were so. You see, we hear preaching and we want to, you know, we want to accept the preaching rate. We want to... Um, be in church, we want to, you know, have a good time. And then we, um, we receive the Word of God um, with all readiness of mind. And then we also read our Bible daily so that we have a good doctrinal foundation to check those things against. We have to read our Bible, you know, daily. If you're not filling your mind with the Bible, whether it's by audio or whether it's by reading the book, um, you're not going to be able to discern these things. So number one, we have to prove Bible teachers or preachers whether they're preaching the truth and prove these things are so. Number two, we have to prove our methods of evangelism. This goes back to what Pastor was uh, saying a little bit before the service. Prove our methods of evangelism, our soul winning, right? The Bible calls it the work of an evangelist. It tells us to do the work of an evangelist. The same chapter that tells us to study to show ourselves approved, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It tells us to be an evangelist. So um, the sub-point within this as far as evangelism goes, we're sent out in pairs. Let's go to Luke chapter 10. Let's turn to uh, the book of Luke chapter 10. <clears throat> the 
we'll see what the Lord Jesus Christ has to say about this. Uh, let's actually begin reading verse number one. After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whether he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth the laborers into his harvest. Amen. And so, uh, the Lord Jesus, when he sent out his disciples, his apostles, to go soul winning, he sent them two by two before his face. And we could even look at Mark chapter 6. Actually, you don't have to turn there, but in Mark 6, 7, it says he, uh, he called unto them the twelve and began to send them forth two by two and two and gave them power over unclean spirits. So we see two witnesses telling us that, um, that there's two... Okay, getting mixed up here. It, by the word, uh, by the uh, mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established, right? right? So we have two different gospels telling us, and it, it also makes us, you know, more believable when we're out soul winning, right? When there's two of us coming up to the door, it's the most efficient way because it's the way that Jesus, um, Jesus told us to do it. You know, ideally, sometimes there's an odd team of three, sometimes there's one that has to go by themselves or whatever, but um, just generally, we should be going out two by two. That's the way we do it here in this church. And we should also, uh, when building soul winning, we should have the boldness to expect that they want to hear the message. We're bringing them the good news of the gospel. We're bringing them the good news of salvation by faith in Jesus Christ. And we should you know, convey the fact that we can, we can know for sure that we're saved. You see, when I knock on someone's door, I ask them, you know, do you go to church anywhere? Just as kind of an icebreaker. I have them the track for Friendship Baptist Church. And then I say, uh, well, more important than going to church, though, do you know for sure that you're on your way to heaven when you die? Do you know for sure that you're, that you're saved, that you have Christ as your Savior? And uh, they'll give a, a varying you know, degree of answers. They'll say anywhere from absolute no to absolute yes. You know? um, they'll say that, um, you know, a lot of times they'll say, um, I'm pretty sure, you know, I, I, I think I'm a good person. I, I think I'm you know, good enough to get to heaven, right? Um, and at that point I tell them the Bible says that we can know for sure that we're saved, that we can know for sure that we're going to heaven and we want to convey that fact we want to convey that boldness to them uh, let's go to Acts chapter 9 and while you're turning there I'm going to read for you from Philippians 1.20 uh, the Bible reads according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. You see, uh, many times in, in the epistles of Paul, he's, he's telling them, you know, pray for me that I might have boldness to preach the gospel, boldness to go out Amen. and open my mouth boldly to, to make known the mysteries of the gospel of Christ. Thanks, chapter... Acts 9, let's look at verse 27. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he, spoken to, he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out of Jerusalem. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. So he's... He has boldness, even though people are trying to kill him. Even though he's being thrown in jail, all the apostles are being you know, beaten up and persecuted and thrown in jail for the cause of Christ. But they still have boldness to preach the gospel. Even one of our favorite soul winning verses, Acts 16.30. The Philippian jailer, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. You see, they're in prison, and, and they have the boldness. Obviously, God worked a miracle to break them out of jail. But, uh, but they, they have the boldness. They even wanted to get the... Uh, the jail guard saved. You know, uh, even when Paul was in bonds, he still wanted to, he wanted to have the brethren pray for him that he would have the boldness to go out and uh, to, to preach the gospel and, and just make converse of anyone that's available in prison and that's willing to hear. Him. So, um, another thing with this, within this evangelism is we need to have a plan in place to give the gospel. We need to have a plan. We need to go out there um, 
we don't want to go out there kind of haphazardly like I, I probably did you know when I was first starting out soul winning um, I was still trying to work on getting my plan but I, it really like when it when it first came to fruition it was really you know falling apart I kept you know as soon as I get into my plan of salvation I'm like oh man I forget you know what verses I'm turning to I forget what point I want to go to next I forget you know I'm fumbling my Bible around um, but we need to have a plan in place it's called a plan of salvation for a reason right it's called you know the, the plan here's what you need to do to get saved there's a few things that I want to show you from the Bible in order that you can know for sure that you're going to heaven see salvation is easy but there's only a few things you need to understand you see when like let's say I, I'm at someone's door right I knock on their door and I ask them you know do you know for sure that you're going to heaven um, and they say well no I'm, I'm not very I'm not very sure on these things at all I haven't really thought about it Say, well, can I take like five or ten minutes and just show you the plan of salvation? Just show you what the Bible says that you can know for sure. Just show you a few scriptures that you can um, hopefully, you know, re receive Christ as your Savior, right? So I get right into it. I, I don't, I don't really like to, you know, beat around the bush or anything. I, I just get right to the salvation because that's the most important thing. That's why when I ask them, like, oh, oh what church do you go to? Well, more important than going to church. This is what, what I really want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about salvation. Um, so there's really just a four-point um, process as far as giving someone the gospel. We need to tell them that they're a sinner, for all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. We tell them that there's a punishment for sin, for the wages of sin is death. And then we go to Revelation 20, 14 oftentimes, and we explain to them the doctrine of hell. We explain to them that hell is... You know, is a real place in the center of the earth that burns with fire and brimstone. It's torment forever and ever, and that's what you deserve because you're a sinner. And we're all sinners, and we all deserve that, of course. And so I go through that, and then I tell them, "But do you think God loves you, though?" Well, of course, God is love, right? That's often what they say, and it's true. And then I turn to Romans five eight, for God so loved, or for uh, God commended His love toward us, Amen. and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I started to call John 3.16. That's another great one, too. That shows the love of God. Um, that he gave his only begotten son. So you go through these points, and, and you show them. And you get them. we get them to agree with these points. We get them to, to basically understand these points. Um, in fact, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 6 here. Ephesians chapter 6. This ought to help prepare you as well. Um, if you say, like, maybe there's some people in here who have never heard the term soul winning before you started coming to this church, right? Um, we're a soul winning church at Friendship Baptist Church. And we want to keep soul winning and doing great works for God. <coughs> so Ephesians 6 verse 14. Stand therefore, having your, loin, your loins girt about with truth, and having on the, ble the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You see, we have to be prepared in order to preach the gospel. We have to have a plan in place. I remember for, for like, you know, it seemed like the longest time, it seemed like three or four months or, or whatever, um, I had a series of tabs in my Bible, and I had a place where I could go. Like, this is the first tab, this is where I go first. Second tab, third tab. I have like nine or ten tabs up here in my Bible. Why? Because I need to know where to turn next. I need to go. You know, I, I was tired of forgetting where to go. Forgetting, like, oh man, what, is it Titus? Is it Timothy? Which one is it? No. I want to have a plan in place. And sooner or later, you know, you memorize the plan. Sometimes you change things up a little bit. Sometimes you say it like, oh, um, I used to use John uh, ten. I, I used to use John eleven, twenty six through twenty eight. Or 26 and 27, then I decided uh, let's take that out. Let's use another verse instead. That's you know that, that's up to you. It's, it's every person's plan of salvation is something that's unique to them. It's something that you know you don't have to use the exact same verse as I do, you know, or else you're a, a dirty heretic or anything, right? <laughs> so, um, but the bottom line is you have to prepare. You know, if there's um, if there's anything that that I myself or you know, any, any of the brothers here that go soul winning, Brother Gabe, Brother Daniel, uh, Ryan, Jeff that comes in oftentimes. You know, if there's anything that we can do to, you know, kind of help you and explain to you what soul winning is or what the gospel is, if you're not sure on that, 
by all means, we're, we're always, um, we always love to help people on that. Um, so let's see, we have a plan in place to give the gospel. And the last point, you know, the last point of the, the gospel itself, obviously, is calling upon the name of the Lord, making sure that they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and receive him as their Savior. And um, the last point that we usually turn to is Romans 10. You know, th that's just a part of our plan. That's just a part of what we do when we're soul winning. And the Bible commands us over and over, even if, if you look through all the Old Testament stories, I mean, everything is pointing, you know, number one, it's pointing to Christ. So there's a lot of things in the Old Testament that are a picture of Christ. And number two, everything, the reason why uh, a lot of things happen is, is for the furtherance of the gospel in the Old Testament or the New Testament, which is, by the way, the, the same gospel. There's only one way to be saved throughout all eternity, Amen. and that's to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, there's no difference in Old Testament salvation. But uh, let's turn to the book of Proverbs. Let's go to point number three, our last point here. Uh, just as a recap, point number one, Prove Bible teachers or preachers whether they're preaching the truth. You want to check everything that they're saying against the Bible. And number two, prove our methods of evangelism. We want to prove what we're doing from the Bible. We want to prove that we're doing the right methods. Um, and we want to have a plan in place, right? We want to have a plan of what we're going to do. In Proverbs chapter 20, uh, the third point I want to get to is this. Prove how to live your day-to-day -day life, just in life in general, right? Whether it's on the job, whether it's, you know, with your friends, your buddies, or whatever. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> there's obviously a whole lot of wisdom packed into the book of Proverbs. It, this, there's so many, you know, points that you could read. If you just read one chapter of the book of Proverbs, it talks about so many different things. Um, <coughs> Let's start in uh, chapter 20, verse 1. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. I'll be a witness to that. I was unwise according to this verse for, for many years. And so, if anyone tries to tell you that drinking alcohol, you know, is okay, or, or that drinking, you know, doing any drugs is okay, it's, it's all... Um, it's all poison. It's all harmful to your body and to your mind Amen. and to your soul. Amen. It'll distort your judgment. It'll pervert your uh, judgment of, you know, it'll, obviously it'll get you out of church. It'll get you to stop doing things for God. But, and it leads down a slippery slope. That wasn't even in my notes. Number two, uh, verse number two, the fear of a king is as the running of a lion. Whoso provoketh him to anger sinneth against his own soul. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife but every fool will be meddling. Now watch this. this. This is what I wanted to get to in verse number four. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. You see, the way that the Bible teaches us you know, to work and to uh, not only our spiritual work in reading the Bible and studying the Bible and, and doing these things, but our physical work, just the regular work that we do, the job that we go to, uh, it tells us to work diligently. Let's go to Proverbs, um, Proverbs chapter 12. Turn back to chapter 12. While you turn there, I'll read from chapter uh, 10, verse 4. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. You see, the Bible tells us to be diligent. It tells us to uh, basically stay on task. There, there's, only, uh, there's only so much that your mind can handle. And I, I believe, you know, just my personal belief, I think it's... Um, almost impossible to actually multitask. You know, some people say they're good at multitasking, but really you're just doing one thing at a time. There's only, you can only do one thing at a time. So if you have a job, like let's say you go to your job and there's so many things you gotta deal with, you gotta have a task list, you gotta have a priority list. Say this is my priority, this is what I need to work on right now because it's you know due right now or because it's something that I have to do every day. Um, and then let's say you have long -term pro longer term projects that you can work on. You can get to those once the higher priority stuff gets done. And obviously, you know, everyone's job is different. Uh, there's different things that you have to deal with. But you have to have some kind of a plan in place. You have to be diligent enough to say, okay, th all this stuff needs to get done. And it's my responsibility to do it. And there's no way I can get anyone else to do it. Because <laughs> it's all, you know, come on me. So 
what we want to do is we want to be diligent. Let's go. Let's look at verse uh, 24 here, 1224. The hand of the diligent shall, shall bear rule, but it, but the slothful shall be under tribute. We want to we want to be able to say this actually ties back in with my soul winning. In fact, it, t- it ties in because we want to be diligent enough to have a plan in place. <clears throat> the only way that you're going to be able to get a promotion, you know, at a job or anything, is if you uh, is if you demonstrate to your boss that you're a hard worker, that you're getting everything done that you need to, that you <clears throat> that you do, you know, that you do a good job, and not only do a good job, not only do what they expect you to do, but also exceeding above that which that which um, is your job title, or your job description, right? So the Bible talks a lot about um, diligence, and we have to uh, we have to you know have a plan in place. We have to be able to have a priority list to where we say this needs to be done first. This needs to be done second. You can even write it out throughout the day. If, if you just think of something, oh man, I just forgot, this needs to be done. Write it down on a sticky note. Write it down so that way you don't forget. Something that, um, something that you'll learn if, if, you, like, if, if you're in school, if you're a student, or if you, um, if you, especially if you study the Bible, if you write things down, it actually helps you to remember it, no matter whether you look at it uh, later ever again in your life, no matter whether you actually look at those notes again in your life, which you probably should, right? But the, the fact that you're writing it down, the fact that you're processing it through your brain to write it down, actually helps you remember it. It helps you, um, helps you, helps bring it to your remembrance when you need that information, right? That's the reason why we write down notes, you know, for our sermons and everything else. <clears throat> so, I hope that these things edify you here today. Let's, let's uh, do a quick recap. Number one. Prove Bible teachers or preachers whether they're preaching the truth. Number two, we need to prove our methods of evangelism. We need to prove whether we're doing the right thing. Um, Number three, we need to prove how to live our day-to-day life. And I wrote a few things down here I didn't get to. Okay, one, another verse I want to give you uh, in regards to soul winning. Um, you can even put this in your plan of salvation. You can even mix this in to your uh, gospel presentation. It was in the first part of my notes here. Go to Acts chapter 4. Let's go back to Acts chapter 4. Because this is actually a common objection. A common objection that people say is, well, what about, you know, what about all the other religions of the world? What about people that say, you know, what about people that call upon the name of their own God? What about the, you know, they follow the light that they have, right? How can you expect them to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ if they never heard of the name of Jesus Christ? Well, number one, the Bible says that the gospel has gone out into all the world. I believe every um, every nation and every generation has had a witness of the light, has had the, you know, has had a righteous remnant in that nation at, at that time. But number two, because the Bible says it, by none other name you must be saved. Um, Acts 4 verse 10, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's no other name that you could believe in. There's no other way of salvation that you could possibly have other than believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, another uh, another verse that comes to mind as well. Let's go back. Let's go to Romans chapter one. Just flip forward a few pages in your Bible. Romans chapter one, which is never a bad, a bad place to turn to. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's. Um, if we look at verse sixteen, Romans one verse sixteen. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. Uh, watch this, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. 
For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You see, the Bible says that um, the Bible says that, that God makes manifest his um, his own power. He, he makes manifest his Godhead, which is three in one, not just one, not just three, but three in one. Um, he makes manifest his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. He he makes them manifest. Now, if you um, if you talk about someone like in a remote part of the world, or maybe someone who just hasn't been exposed to the truth yet, but they want the truth. The Bible says, "Ask and you shall receive; seek and you shall find; knock and it shall be opened unto you." You know, if someone receives the love of the truth, then I believe God will make a person make a way for that person to be able to hear the gospel. Right? If you're seeking the truth, who who in here would say that they're um, a truther? I know I am. <laughs> who in here loves the truth? We all ought to love the truth, right? Now, the truther is kind of a, a stigmatic label, you know, um, especially about 10 or 15 years ago. But if, if you're a truther, all that means is that you're seeking the truth. You're researching and you're digging and you're trying to find the truth. That was me, you know, and, until I found, I found out about soul winning, until I found out about... Um, until I found out about the Baptist movement of soul winners that's, that's going on across the country... You know, I, I had no idea of these things, but once I found it, I loved it. Once I found it, I'm like, this is the way that, that soul winning needs to be done. This is the way evangelism needs to be done. You know, I, and I think back to um, Christian schools, not that it was bad or anything like that, but I think back to Christian schools where I was taught that, um, you know, Jesus, I was taught all the sweetness and light, which is all true, it's all from the Bible, and I say amen to all of it, but I wasn't taught about the hard truth that, you know, God will will bring um, will bring punishment in your life because uh, the Bible says, "For the Lord, for the Lord chasteneth every scur yeah. every son that He receiveth. Right. He scourgeth every son that He receiveth. Right. So He's going to scourge us and whip us into shape so that we're doing the right thing, right? That we're soul winning and winning people to Christ and studying His Bible and doing these things. But you know, studying the truth, I always, uh, as soon as I got my head out of the bottle, right? I wanted to. Um, find the truth. I, want, I wanted to learn the truth about the world, the truth about what's going on. Started getting into banks, and you know, the bankers do this and that, and started getting into politics, all the UN, global government, you know, one world government, one world religion, oh man, the world's coming to an end. You know, it, it all seems like doom and destruction until you find the real truth of Jesus Christ. You know, anyone who's not saved who is a truther, once they, you know, if, if they are really searching after the truth, and they ought to come to this book right here because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other truth outside of this. Amen. So I hope these things help Amen. you here today. Um, this says a recap. Number one, prove Bible teachers or preachers whether they're preaching the truth. Number two, prove our methods of evangelism. Number three, prove how to live your day-to-day -day life. Uh, let's close in, close in prayer. Brother Ryan, pray for us. Dear God, thanks so much for the word of God, Lord, and just the fact that we have it preserved today and that we can um, prove things by, Lord. Thanks so much for this message that we've heard this morning. Mm -hmm. Pray that you just um, bless all of us here, fill past with the love of your spirit as you preach yeah. this morning and tonight. Lord, please just help us have an effective and fruitful day out soul winning. And Lord, thanks so much for the brethren. I pray that you just uh, give, uh, give us kindness one to another and to the world. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.